Yeah. He's really using the access to come to you. Yeah. Open door policy. Correct. More players doing that this 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 go around. Yeah. Yes, I have certainly. You know, and I think a lot of attributes to um, our summer schedule and some things we were able to do in the summer that NCAA allows. And then this is really our, our training camp. Last summer, last fall, uh, summer training camp, our guys had classes. So they were in class, scrambled to get them an hour or so to meet, and then we're practicing. You know, now, you know, we have a big block of meeting time in the morning. They have a midday break. We got another meeting before practice. And, you know, there's a lot of guys hanging around in McHugh Right, want to get extra film or get extra nuggets, right? Tips. What can I do? You know, coach, why why are we doing this? And there's more guys asking why as opposed to just assuming they're asking why. Yeah. You think it's leading to a better understanding of the I do. I do believe that. You know, and Tony had had a background anyway very similar. So the transition makes it easy. Um, but you know, but all the pieces coming together, whether it's the backs, receivers, tight ends, O-line, right? We all got a little chip on about ourselves to go out there and put together a good product. Yeah. 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 Again, and he's one of the guys that uh, his personality's come out, right? Last year he was a first-year kid, probably uncertain of himself, got thrust into action probably before he's ready, even though physically he handled it, and now – He's just more confident because now he's actually he's smiling, he's talking, he's jovial. And before, hey, he was very, like, just unsure of himself. So to see that come out brings up a lot of confidence. You know, his body's changed from the weight room and his condition is better. You know, so you see him playing with a lot more power out there at practice. And I, it's a lot of it because he's got more athletic confidence about himself, you know. The O-line, I think, is as healthiest as it's been yeah. since you guys have been here. How great is it getting those reps yeah. in? Yeah, you know, that's that's a good thing because our numbers are up. You know, we're able to rep three groups, which allows those first two groups of guys to kind of stay fresh because they're not having to do three rotations. And um, they're doing well. You know, Coach Heff is pushing them hard, and they're responding. You know, today was the first day in shoulder pads. And uh, like anything, we've got a few things to clean up, but I like where we are, you know, at the uh, practice three. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, Musket's going with the, with the first group, Calandra with the second group, here through the third, you know, through the third practice. You know, Grady and Delaney, those guys are sprinkling in there with the thirds. And then, you know, we got another practice tomorrow where we get some, some situational football, evaluate that, go into next week and probably start kind of mixing some things up, uh, giving Calandra opportunity to work with the first group, you know, and see how he handles and, and operates in that situation. And truthfully, see how Musket does with the second group, you know and getting everybody familiar with each other because, again, football is a physical game. Next man up, anything can happen. So, obviously, we're aware of that from last year. When you guys were shopping for a new offensive line coach, yep. what, what did you and Tony like about Hef? What, yep. what separated him from the other candidates? So, what the first thing everybody said about Hef is he's a developer. He's a teacher in all of our research that we've done. And then you go back and look at his background. You know, as a D2 guy, as a player, you know, he came up in the ranks as a D2 coach to an FCS coach, you know, was an assistant O-line coach at two stints in the NFL, you know, was a Power 5 coach with David Shaw, really highly respected coach. You know, he, he worked for Jim Caldwell in the Detroit Lions. You know, he worked for up in Buffalo with, that, with those guys. So there was a lot of people that spoke to him as a developer, a teacher, and that's what we needed, you know, with this group of offensive linemen. And he's a tough guy, hard-nosed guy, but he's, he's fair, and that's what we were looking for. Yeah. Yeah. He could do a lot, you know, and um, because one, he's such a football guy, right? He's very smart, savvy, um, plays good in space, and he's tough. He's built like a running back, you know. And and you know, I was joking with him yesterday. Had some per, uh, perimeter stuff, and he was blocking guys up. I was like, "Thank you for bringing that Big Ten blocking to us," you know, blocking on the perimeter. So he's an unselfish guy, right? He just wants to play football. He wants to contribute to help us win, and uh, that's and he's doing that. So. Yep. The things you're targeting, are you seeing the improvements? I am. And today was a test to him because, you know, we've been stressing just, hey, growth mindset, right? Every day just seeking growth mindset. And the guys have accepted that challenge. And we're pushing them. We're pushing the envelope, right? We push them to the threshold, seeing if they're crash, and they're not crashing. You know, they're, they're being resilient in that, in the effort and the strain. 
you know, like anything, we still got to clean up some details, but I like our effort. I like where we are effort-wise and the communication amongst all guys. And uh, we keep doing that, man. I think we'll, we'll have a, the success we're seeking. So. There's a kid from Houston. I don't know how you pronounce you gonna? it. Yeah. yeah, you gonna? Uh, how's he coming along? He's doing well, too. He saw probably a 10, uh, I think maybe 15-pound gain since he got here, you know, the strength of the training room. And has brought a good, solid, like, sturdy guy in there at guard for us. And um, I think – don't think I know Yagana's a very conscientious kid. You know, he wants to do it right. You know, he love those kind of guys, right? Sometimes it can paralyze them. But I'd rather have that than a guy that doesn't care. Because you know it means something to him and he's one of those type kids. But how many receivers would you like to have going into this season? Yeah. Where are you guys at that You know, we're still you know, in the season you like to have a solid six, you know. And a lot of that depends on special teams. We talk about right, guys gotta contribute on special teams. And, you know, we have, if you include the freshmen, you know, they're getting a lot of work too for us to evaluate them. Uh, I think we'll find that six by the time we get to the first game. Yeah. What do you like with Malachi got to be in back? Yeah. <laughs> I like a lot about Malachi <laughs> being back, you know. But it's just a steady presence, man. The guy's, uh, you know, he's just a quiet, you know, but a hardworking guy. Um, you know, he don't ask for much. You know, he just shows him work. And he's a sponge for information. He just wants to know, like, what can I do to get better? How can I help the team? You know, and um, it's been very refreshing to have him back because he's a playmaker. You know, he's going he's to make plays for us this fall. Did Gibson help himself by, by being here in the spring? Yes. You see a totally a, a kid that, you know, benefited from being here uh, through spring practice, right? He's more confident now, right? Whereas the, some of the other freshmen who got here in, in June, they're still a little timid, you know? Jade is more confident. He's actually another kid. He's trying to help the young guys, right? And that's the thing you like when you, you got players. It's competitive, and everybody's competing for positions. But when you got guys trying to coach and help the next guy because we know it benefits the team, then, you know, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about building a team, an offensive unit, a team to go win games. So. Got two more or yeah. one more? What else you got? Correct. Yeah, we do. You know, yesterday, I mean, Fert and Skelly, because um, I hadn't done the chart yet for the day, but we started off 10 for 10, you know, in pass scale. You know, that's obviously quarterbacks, that's receivers, and it carried over into our team period with some of the things we're doing there. So you see, like, the execution of whether it's Musket or Calandria or Grady of, like, getting into their progression, first read, second read, balls out of their hand. Right, and that's a big key to offensive football. We talk a lot about passing the football, the spacing, timing, and trust. Right, and we're we're building that understanding of the vertical spacing, the horizontal spacing, the timing in which we got to be, where we got to be, and the trust that hey, I'm gonna make this play. All right, I don't care if I'm first in the read or third in the read. I'm trusting I'm gonna be in my spot. That if the quarterback comes to me, we're making the play. So everybody's having a fuller understanding of that.